Well, sometimes uh, it seems to me that young people who in traditional societies were seen as a resource, the idea used to be that young people come into the world carrying a dream or a vision that has to awaken in them. Um, and that dream that they have will outlive the older people who are in charge. That's the nature of humanity and, and the way the world works. And one of the responsibilities of a culture was to invite and welcome and help awaken the vision and the dream inside its own young people for the benefit of the entire tribe or the entire community. We have it reversed now. People see the young people coming along as the next batch of, com of uh, what do they call them? Consumers. And so um, it's the exact opposite. The, we consider this, uh, everybody's blasé about this being a consumer culture. But traditional cultures were gift-giving cultures, the exact opposite. And each young person coming was seen as a, someone carrying gifts. And the gifts aren't just for them, they're for everybody. And so when young people aren't welcomed, they may not even find their gifts, and then everybody loses out. So we're in a reverse situation of what would be a genuine culture. But, and then, so then I had this idea that there's a double whammy being put on young people. On one hand, they're exiled in the sense that no, you, the culture doesn't welcome young people. In, in many ways, um, it doesn't like them. You can find that out in school. All you have to do is go to a high school and you can feel, typically speaking, how unwelcome the young people are. So on one level, they're ex exiled. On the other level, they're exploited because they are used as the base for marketing things. And uh, so it's a disaster. You know, everybody is familiar with the African proverb, it takes a whole village to raise a child. But there's another idea that isn't so familiar, and that is to say it takes young people to raise a village. The tradition throughout the cultures of the world is that um, a, a society or, or a culture would reinvent itself while it was initiating its young people. And that a culture ultimately is the combination of dreams and visions carried by its young people and its old people. Now, modern culture um, rejects its young people and forgets its old people. And there's an old idea that says a culture comes apart from two places at once, where its youth are rejected and where its elders are forgotten. So you could say that what happens now is instead of initiation and rites of passage, which would connect the generations, you have a generation gap. Everybody talks about it as if it was simply normal. In the history of human culture, it's not normal. That gap used to have a bridge, and the bridge was made of rites of passage. Um, on the other hand, you can also say that modern culture, what happens to old people, uh, for instance, Alzheimer's, you could call that a cultural disease in the sense that when a culture forgets its old people, they forget themselves. So we're, in, we're in living through a period of forgetting where people have forgotten what culture really is. And the significant place where the trouble manifests is young people. In other words, children are, are, are in trouble, but children can't stand up for themselves. Young people have gotten big enough where they can cause trouble because they're feeling troubled. And so that's where usually the problems lie. So mosaic, we go looking for trouble. That's, our, that's how we go about our stuff. We look for good trouble. And so that's how we wound up doing a, a lot of work with young people. And how do you incorporate the mythology into that thing? Oh, well, I, I tell them stories. And, I've, and 